Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. Last video, I did a rundown of the July patch, and it seems I missed something pretty big that we'll look into for this video. According to the patch notes, skirmishers and units which fire multiple projectiles now add the correct amount when garrisoned. I didn't think too much of that when I first read it and skipped it in the patch highlights, but after a bit of prompting and giving it a closer look, this was actually quite a notable change for two civilizations in particular. Let's check it out. First of all, some of you likely already know how extra projectiles work, but just so that we're all on the same page, I'll give a quick refresher. Basically, when you garrison units, the game tries to work out their damage output or DPS and give you an equivalent number of additional arrows. A crosswoman has the same attack and reload time as a tower, so each one garrisoned adds an extra arrow, up to a maximum of four. Now, archers and towers don't always have the same attack and fire rate, and if we have a guard tower, for example, with higher attack, we need either more or stronger units to increase the number of arrows. It's a pretty robust calculation, and seems to account for differences in attack rates, civ bonuses, and upgrades. It's also the same concept with a castle. It may seem harder to add extra arrows since castles have 11 base attack, which is quite a bit higher than most archers, but you can also fit a lot more archers inside. In this example, every three of my unupgraded archers adds one extra castle arrow. Now there is one critical difference between archer arrows and building arrows though, in that the castle and tower arrows do bonus damage against certain buildings, notably towers. Adding one or two extra arrows doesn't double or triple, but gives six or 11 times as much damage against another tower, which is a useful fact to keep in mind. Villagers also contribute the same as an archer with fletching, which makes them actually pretty decent at adding arrows in the early game. So that's a one minute crash course in extra projectiles. So what was the problem that needed to be fixed in the last patch? First of all, they mentioned skirmishers. Skirmishers have low attack and take 50% longer to reload between shots than archers, so they've never been thought of as a great unit for adding additional arrows. Remember, it's all about damage output, but it turns out even when you factor that in, skirmishers were much worse than they should have been. Prior to last week's change, a post-imperial Japanese castle with 20 elite skirmishers didn't add a single extra arrow. Skirmishers are bad, but not that bad. Based on their damage, they actually should have been adding 6 arrows. Switching to the newest patch and trying the same thing again, that's exactly what we get. It even takes the mine's additional javelin into account, and mines can get these same 6 arrows added to a castle with 2 fewer units. That's going to be important a bit later. Likewise, you previously needed 9 feudal skirmishers to add a single arrow to a watchtower, which was actually only possible for Tudens. That's just a third of what they should have been adding, even after you account for their slow firing rate and low attack. Switching to the current patch, you get one additional arrow for roughly every three skirmishers, which is exactly what we should expect. Of course, they're still worse than archers, they're not a great garrison unit, but at least they're contributing something now. Maybe even more importantly, the patch notes also mention units that fire multiple arrows, which in addition to mine skirmishers, also includes the Chukunu and Kipchak. Now Chukunu have infamously always had it a bit rough when it comes to adding extra arrows, which is somewhat ironic given firing lots of arrows is their whole identity. The way their arrows work is they have a main one that deals the damage they officially show, and then they have three or four additional arrows that deal three pierce damage each. In the worst case, Elite Chukunu should have about 4.7 DPS looking only at the main arrow, and best case if you include the extra arrows, they should have about 8.7, which is slightly more than the castle's 7.5. Historically, you needed 19 Elite Chukunu to get an extra 3 arrows though, whereas ignoring all of their extra arrows and using just the primary one, they should have been giving about 4 times that much. The only explanation that makes sense is the game was using one of their extra arrows to base the calculation on, and was throwing out the rest of their damage. To give it some context, a completely unupgraded Dark Age Archer contributed more to castle arrows than a fully upgraded Elite Chukunu. Likewise, the Elite Kipchak does 8 damage with its main arrow and 3 damage with the other 3 it fires. It should have been treated as doing between 3.64 and 7.73 damage per second, depending on if the extra arrows are included. But in practice, you needed 18 of them to add 4 arrows to a castle, which again was worse than a Dark Age Archer. So that's the depth of the problem before, and admittedly it was a bit of an issue. So now let's take a look at how this all works after the July patch. Trying out all of those tests again, the results are pretty dramatic. Just 13 Elite Chukunu reaches the maximum number of Castle Age arrows at 20. Previously, you needed 6 Chukunu for 1 extra arrow, and now basically every Chukunu adds 1, sometimes 2, until you hit the cap. It seems like all of their arrows are now being included, and in fact they're even getting slightly more arrows than I expected. With 11 Garrison Elite Chukunu, factoring in all of their damage, I expected 12 extra arrows, when in practice, the game is giving 14, which I think is reflecting their faster firing rate with Thumbring. 
safe to say it's a very generous way to calculate it, and this is on top of the castle having four more range than the elite Chukunu as well. It's also a pretty similar situation when it comes to Kipchaks. Previously, a fully garrisoned castle with 20 of them added 4 additional projectiles, but now after 14 Kipchaks, you've already hit the cap, meaning each unit is adding at least one arrow. Again, this only makes sense if it's accounting for every arrow the Kipchak fires. At this point, you can get 4 cannonballs out of a Teutonic Bombard Tower if you fill it with Elite Chukonu, which beats the previous record of 3 held by Elite Janissaries. Remember, in addition to more range and giving your units protection, extra castle and tower arrows also carry their own bonus damage as well. Extra castle arrows do plus 11 against ships and plus 9 against stone walls, gates, and towers. In certain situations, they're going to shred through targets much faster than players expect. Now this all comes down to the fact that the Chukunu and Kipchak on paper have incredible DPS, but against a unit with say 2 pierce armor, that armor is applied to every one of their arrows, so you only really feel about half of it. It's not until you see all of the arrows you're getting from a castle that you realize these are extremely high DPS units. I have to wonder out loud if at this point the change is too much, and if instead of all of their arrows it should only use their main arrow for the calculation. To see if that's an overreaction, I wanted to try to frame how they compare to other ranged units. Since this is all based on damage output, I set up a little test against some outposts, since they have no pierce armor. It's a nice way to capture their attack, reload time, and the impact of Thumbring, as that affects some range units differently than others, and I'd already been caught off guard by that with the Chukunu earlier. Testing so many units at the same time, there were a few things I had to correct for, but that's all been done. I then calculated roughly how many extra arrows you'd be getting from each type of unit, and here are the results. I've ranked them based on how many arrows you'd expect them to add to a castle per unit garrisoned with the highest at the top, and then to the right of that is how many you'd expect to need in order to have the maximum number of extra arrows that a castle allows. You can see the elite Chukunu and Kipchak are at the top of the list, with 13 and 14 units respectively to reach that maximum cap. For most other ranged units, they need 18 or more to reach that point, and anything at the fully upgraded Arbalest and lower can't give you the maximum arrows before the castle is full. All this to say the multi-arrow units do stand out, contributing about 50% more than the average archer, though Elite and Rambai aren't that far behind. In their case, since their low accuracy isn't taken into account, they also give a decent number of additional projectiles. For a bit of context, prior to this change, the Chukunu and Kipchak would have been at the bottom of the list, even below where the Elite Skirmisher is now, and for its part, the Elite Skirmisher would have been effectively at zero. But while we're on the topic of extra arrows, there's one small thing I wanted to throw in here, which is the Crepost. In terms of its damage output, the Crepost is very similar to a castle, but with slightly less attack. If you look behind the scenes though, it turns out the Crepo's secondary arrows are in fact castle arrows, meaning they do 2 more damage than the main arrow that's reflected in their stats. I was curious if you could exploit that by garrisoning units and getting more arrows than you should because of the Crepo's lower attack, but it turns out the programming is pretty airtight. You need to garrison the same DPS worth of units as a castle in order to get those extra arrows, so yes the additional arrows for Crepo's pack a bit of extra punch, but you need to garrison a proportionally larger DPS worth of units in order to get that. I'm kind of impressed, as that would be an easy thing to miss and something you'd never notice unless you look for it. So that's a rundown of the context and the outcome of the latest change. It was pretty big for both Chinese and Cumans, and I expect a few people are going to be caught off guard by it. That's all for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.